All right, Pete on Zoom admin. Um, we're recording now. Any anything else uh, I need to get uh, on my side? You might want to click the share screen thing and um, and say uh, share. Everybody can share or something like that. All right, beautiful. Well, welcome everybody. Um, Pete, would you like to share your um, share your quick proposal on on recording and your suggesting suggestion for how those get get stored? Uh, uh, yeah, today? thanks, thanks, Jordan. Um, we Jordan and I realized uh, that last week's call, while it was great, um, we we didn't let people know. We let people know that it was recorded. We didn't let people know that it might be shared or how it would be shared. Uh, so um, so that's given us some friction in in thinking about how we might share it. Uh, I'd like to propose, or I'd like to propose that uh, we record calls like this and that we put them into the Commons uh, with a. Uh, Creative Commons attribution license, which means that um, practically it means that anybody can use it for anything, but they have to give uh, the, the people who created it credit. Um, that's the that's kind of a, a least restrictive, almost least restrictive way to uh, put things in the Commons. It's actually more restrictive than public domain, which means you can do anything with this and I don't even care if you give me credit. Um, so anyway, I uh, so I would like to propose that we record these calls and put them in the Commons under CC BY, which is the short name of Creative Commons Attribution, um, and they'll go up on you if if that's uh, if that's okay with everybody. They'll go up on YouTube. They'll go up probably in other video sharing places sooner or later. Uh, so, so if that's not okay with anybody, then we should talk about it at some point. Maybe now. There's a couple of people too that suggested that it might be meaningful if we um, down the road have some people um, who are good with video to maybe try to create, you know, pull short highlights or excerpts out of these and, and be able to distribute just to keep people in the loop. So, so, so that's kind of our proposed plan of action. Does anybody um, object or feel uncomfortable? Um, well, that? we'll have a comment. Uh, I, I do a lot of uh, video live streaming to YouTube. Um, a lot of times <laughs> video editing takes a lot of time but the most yeah. optimization of time I find is just broadcast live from Zoom into, into YouTube. And this just use the editor. You can create all kinds of video. It takes no time. So that's oh, got it. an interesting okay. point, something to think about. You can make it unlisted in the beginning and once you edit it. Yeah. Mm, okay. I'll probably help you do the cheese, yeah. Um, I think it's possibly important to note when something sensitive might need to be taken out rather than trying to do it the other way around. So if yeah. something's turned up that's personal and they're just, you know, this particular moment, someone notes that where that is in the flow and um, just checks in because once it goes out, you know, in creative commons and such, most of the time people are just frank and they're just themselves. But occasionally something will turn up where you think, you know, that's probably not kind to that person. And, and to go back to that, and that's a lot of work. But if there was just a little bit of a, um, an overview, and I'm not quite sure how you would schedule that, but most of the time people know the moments. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, think, perfect. Yeah, that, that sounds good, Wendy. Yeah, I agree. Okay, beautiful. Well, let's, let's drop in. So um, we'll take a, um, I'm going to take the risk of doing a little little meditation to set the stage uh, today. But before that, just want to kind of orient us to, um, to where we were, where we are. Um, I am intentionally coming to, into today as, as empty as I can. Um, and the reason for that is that this would be week four planning. And so kind of my, uh, my thought coming into this was that we would we would attempt to engage in a little poll planning session that was a little more structured, um, almost like we would do on an infrastructure project where we'd, um, do a, we'd, we'd orient out to our, to our shared kind of um, some of our goals and things that we've set, and then we'd do some backwards planning. And um, I think some of the, uh, the shift of last week's meeting and um, some of the wonderful women in the group that I've been chatting with here this last week, um, it felt like that wasn't the right thing to do to go into that level of, of structure. Um, so I want to kind of reframe this from planning to kind of a navigating meeting. Um, I think for a lot of us, it felt like something 
um, something really important shifted last week and it was a little bit of a threshold moment. Um, uh, it was a really interesting meeting with so many interesting conversations following up on it and I'm, I'm grateful for it. So I think if we can cast today's meeting as a little bit of a navigation meeting and a sense-making meeting, and that's very similar to planning, but if we kind of conceptualized ourselves as considering embarking on a significant quest towards uh, the most worthy goal that we can articulate, um, maybe this, this week we'll start to set out some of the milestones and talk a little bit about the next eight weeks or so, the last couple of weeks of this cycle. Um, and, and we now know that there's enough, imp uh, enough energy to lead into, you know, this being a longer term thing and going into the next, uh, the next cycle. So, so I, th I thought maybe I'd do a little opening, um, just visualization or meditation to kind of drop in. Um, I thought maybe we spend kind of the first part of the question consolidate or first part of the meeting, consolidating some of the big questions that have come up. Um, in some of these conversations, it, it seemed like we're, on the edge of something so significant that's emerging across so many overlapping circles that kind of the questions that we're navigating by might be more important here over the longer term than um, our short-term answers that we're forming to those. So I thought maybe we'd, we'd um, just kind of have an open space. Um, I'll, I'll open us with a meditation here and then just uh, have some, some reverent dialogue about um, getting the group discernment on the most important questions we need to be asking ourselves as we consider finishing out this cycle and going into the next one. And then coming up with maybe in the second part of the meeting, some hypothesized answers to those. And then I'll do my best to maybe work with a couple of people to consolidate and reflect back um, the first four weeks here um, of kind of the highest aligning shared intentions some of the mapping on where we are, the pieces. Um, last week, we focused a little bit on, on some of the things that are missing or that we'd like to see. If today we can, we can come out of this meeting having articulated uh, the biggest questions that we want to be navigating by and some of the hypothesized um, answers of, and, and particularly a little focus on the next, the next six to eight weeks, um, then I'll try to reflect that back and hopefully that'll be a good um, grounding document then as we we work to enact that engage the next round of people so um i will maybe just drop us into a little a little uh brief visualization uh feel free to turn off your camera if you want or whatever you're comfortable with but um maybe just close your eyes and close your eyes and get comfortable if you're not sit it up straight, just kind of align your spine, feet on the ground and just take a couple deep breaths. Let's take a minute of silence here. It's a very simple visualization to get a little perspective. Just kind of imagine a little ball of pure white light starting to emerge, just a little pinprick in your chest. So you start to visualize that, just kind of watch it start to expand out. Start to fill out through your, through your upper body and down into your legs. Thighs, down into your calves, into your feet, looking out into your arms. Up towards your head, just visualize that perfect, pure, whitest light just radiating and filling your entire being. Just notice anywhere in your 
being that feels uncomfortable with that and just invite the light into those spaces too, any places that need healing. In places that are closed off. Just imagine that light coming forth out of your body and just immersing the room that you're in or the space that you're in. Expanding out bigger to encompass the, the building or the house. Out further into the neighborhood. Just wishing love and compassion and healing on everybody that's around you. Visualize the light expanding a little bit further out to the community that your neighborhood's situated in. Healing and joy, purpose, clarity. A little further to the, the city. feeling the compassion for those who are struggling and in need of help. Not beyond your city to your county. Imagine those lights starting to connect between those of us who are in adjacent counties, outfilling your region. the state bringing the perfect light that exposes and reveals everything that needs to be exposed and revealed and brings healing compassion Up beyond the state to the region of your country that you're in beyond your country to the hemisphere that you're in or the part of the world. So the entire earth just connecting all these fields of light together, covering the earth in love and compassion, truth, justice wisdom out beyond the earth to our solar system merging with the brilliant heat and light of our sun feeling that if you're outside beyond our solar system to our little wing of our galaxy. We'll just try to stretch this as far as we can go out beyond the wing of our galaxy to the whole spiral galaxy of the Milky Way and the hundreds of billions of stars. beyond that to the hundreds of billions of galaxies, each with hundreds of billions of stars. Just stretch that light as far as you can out to the very limits of your ability to conceive of the infinite, the eternal. Be 
beyond time and space. To that's that which is giving rise to time and space. And from that field of perfect light, it's begin to come back, but land in the future, maybe 30, maybe 50 years from now, maybe 2100. And try to visualize in your mind what kind of a world would be co-created from the intention, from that highest intention. Imagine what a truly flourishing world would look like. Imagine what it would taste like. Imagine what it would smell like, what it would sound like. What the water would look like as it flowed through it. What the life would look like. Imagine the cities and the scars healed, restored. Imagine the wounds and the chaos and the destruction healed and fully regenerated, made new. Imagine the symphony of all Things, helping all things rise towards their potential. Imagine the sound of all things harmonized in symphony to the fundamental tone of creation. Once you can see and feel that best possible future state, try to start walking your way backwards to where we are today. Imagining the steps along the way of how that was co-created and brought into being. What happens before that? symphony manifested itself. Steps along the way, the struggles along the way. Mountaintops along the way, the darkest valleys along the way. the aspects of birth along the way, the aspects of death along the way. Maybe a couple years from now where we are, we're on that path towards the best possible future where we might be two or three years from now. Such that if we accomplish that, we would be on approximately the right course. Back to where we might be a year from now, such that if we accomplish that, we might be approximately on course for the milestone two to three years out. Take a moment to feel what that feels like maybe a year from now. We're on approximately the right course towards the best possible future. What does that feel like? Back 
to maybe September quarter or so out. Does it feel like a quarter from now if we're approximately on the right track? Towards a flourishing and abundant, renewed, regenerated, rightly related world. Back to July 3rd or July 4th, the world celebrating with such mixed emotions. Independence Day, but with a mix of fear and uncertainty that's part of collective consciousness right now. Does it feel like two months from now? We're approximately on the right track. What is it that we can say and demonstrate and be that brings hope and courage and faith, light? Walking back to two or three weeks from now as we wrap up this current cycle and get ready to set in the next cycle and figure out the next stages of coming into ever more right relationship. What does that feel like three weeks from now? Two weeks from now, one week from now, what does it feel like 90? minutes from now if we're approximately on the right course. Does it feel like 30 minutes from now? Does it feel like 15 minutes from now? Deep breaths and whenever you're ready, just come back and open your eyes and feel what it likes feels like to be here on approximately the right course right now where we are. Well, thank you for looking up and seeing that it took longer than I expected. I apologize. As far as I can tell, um, this is what it feels like to be approximately on the right course. And I, I feel um, just blown away with gratitude to be here with you today and to have come through the last few weeks. And I think we're approximately on the right track. <laughs> and, uh, so let's let's spend the rest of our, our time together today doing a little bit of navigating. Um, and I'm thinking, let's see, we have an hour. So I'm thinking, um, let's start with maybe just 20 minutes or so of maybe 20, maybe 30, we'll see what happens, but maybe dialogue on the right questions that, um, that we need to be asking. And, do any of the, um, this is kind of a very being oriented um, part. Do any of the ladies on the call feel called to kind of uh, hold space for this dialogue? Not I can kind of guide. Okay, well, 
I'll just lead us uh, gently forward then. So one of the themes that has emerged over this last period it, that I think is really critical is, it's, uh, is this tension between the being and doing side of this emergence. And um, I think a lot of us have, have felt that tension between some of us that are a little more project management, like boots on the ground, let's get going oriented. And, uh, and those of us who are trying to sense as deeply as we possibly can into what is trying to emerge that's beyond our understanding and how we can fully participate in that. And one of the themes or next steps that a couple of people suggested um, was that, that maybe one of the next parts of navigation that's most critical is really, really getting aligned on the biggest right questions. So, um, so let's use, Let's do a waterfall to start and then we'll go into dialogue um, because there's some quieter voices in the room. Let's, let's take two or three minutes and hold our answers, but use the chat. And the kind of questions that I think we should really center, center in on are, are like the, the big questions, the, the navigation questions um, that if we get right, a lot of the other smaller questions can be answered in due course. It's 102, so let's, let's take to like 104 here. No pressure if you don't have any big emergent questions. Uh, you can just kind of relax and listen to the dialogue. But if you've been struck by any key questions, please just feel free to write those in the chat, hold the answers. Does anybody need a, another minute to finish articulating? All right, let's go ahead. Three, two, one, go. All right. All right, so we got a... Uh, Good starting one, Jordan, what do you mean by navigation? Answer that here. Um, how will we help people know what's going on, how they might get involved? How will we know what's going on? How will we answer the needs of both autonomy and independence, coordination and interdependence? How do we co-create the world we wish to see here now? If we were to align our actions towards the eventual rebuilding of Ukraine, what if Ukraine were to become a model of the new systems that the rest of the world can then emulate? What would we need to prepare now, listen to, celebrate, to be ready for that possibility? 
need to articulate the generalized operating principles that feel true based on well-grounded evidence-based work of others. How do we align with, what are they used for, specific language to connect them? How do we get people to not hold back and hide their huge love, great brilliance, inspiration, compassion, thinking big, seeing beyond? What they now hold back for fear of ridicule and judgment, or this is not how it's done. How to not believe the world we see, but believe the world we know and behave accordingly. What actions would lead us there? How to call people into unity and cooperation from their highest while expressing our highest, inviting the highest of what we're capable of. How does a group like this act in crises? We bring more nature into our day-to-day -day moments to prop awareness, calm, respect for life. Layers, process, comparison, compassion, culture, governance, funding, outreach, platform, library, mapping infrastructure, mapping, tracking, coordinating, overview, creation, keeping track of loose ends, starting points. What is the unchanging absolute that can guide all lesser questions and values? How can we each learn to help others let go of some of the objects in our life that feed happiness by consuming? How do we invite people to give fully of their gifts? Who are the people who don't have a project and how do we engage? How do we crowdsource creativity to build a world we want to live and thrive in. The UN has called the 2020s the decade of doing. Many tens of thousands of people around the world are doing things, mostly small and ad hoc. The people with their hands on the big switches don't seem to notice and don't seem to be doing much. The 80 to 100 people interested in the Meta Project are also doing things, some of them also small and ad hoc. What can the Meta Project do to bring these many diverse projects together and bring them to the attention of people whose hands are on the switches? Okay, beautiful. So those are those are some. Let's let's just take a little time for dialogue around around some of those um, some of these questions. Um, Sophia, can I invite from you, um, if you're comfortable, sorry to put you on the spot. Um, in, the, in the realm of kind of continuing to explore the right questions and move us through a process, uh, do you have any intuition on just kind of how to guide a little bit of dialogue here? Um, I'm happy to chime in and I'd love to also hear from Wendy because what I think we experienced in the math first meeting was really fruitful in the way and, and Wendy, whatever preparation did for that was also, I think, if you could make it transparent, so what was like a, a good successful case for you as you were being hosting as well. Um, I feel there's something about convergence and divergence and I feel like that our last meeting was very divergent in a way so we opened fishbowls are great for divergent more harvesting, but I feel like now we need to more like converge into more of that shared purpose arena or what is, as we're closing on the planning, even to honor the invitation, right, of, of six weeks. So my sense is that we need to kind of converge a little bit more and not open more up and divergence. Yeah. Um, this is what I am sensing. And then I would love to hear from Wendy what from that meeting that we just had on the map restaurant would potentially apply here of what you've prepared. Um. Yeah, sure. Thanks for that invitation, Sophia. So first I think two things emerge in my mind uh, from that meeting. One is the way I was choosing to facilitate that meeting. I was making an effort with each person who contributed a thought to respond back to them what I thought I heard them saying and give them a chance to add or correct it so that the thought felt complete before we moved on so that it wasn't a bunch of loose loose ends at the end or it felt a little less like there are a bunch of loose ends at the end. 
what emerged was a better sense, uh, at least for those who are in the uh, map weavers group of how we can best next take steps towards creating maps that help um, help people see community, help people in um, communities engage. There was kind of that, that whole thread. Then there was a thread about how do we take the maps and make them more accessible, even if it's pulling information out of them and making it more of a journalistic um, story or paragraph or PDF version so that those who aren't, so it makes it a little more mainstream and a little more accessible by more people. We also had conversation around, I'm trying to remember, I just curated this. And so I, I checked it off in my mind. This, put this, it, is, put it this is great, Wendy. I just wanted to understand just the basic, big, basic structure and what's coming as inspiration is, I wonder, um, if we, with the questions that we just had in Waterfall, if we ask, activate Jonathan Sand's superpowers of actually working on that on the back end while we go through some time of fishbowl to open up of those questions and hear from everyone and have some of that dialogue while we're having the fishbowl, Jonathan's working on the back end with his genius <laughs> to maybe find some points of what would be converging or what are hot pieces or, or what would be, I'm particularly looking for that convergence. So even as we go into fishbowl, I would also invite what is converging in our dialogue instead of divergent. Does okay. that, that sound really, like a, a potential? That feels really good, really yeah? good, Sophia. So, so I wanna, um, let me just provide a little, um, a little context. I'm also seeing that um, Hank was the last chair and, and he's pointing out rightly that there's tens of thousands of people out there who are doing all these activities. And I think the core thing that we're trying to do here is figure out how we bring the diverse projects together while establishing right relationship and, and protecting the sovereignty and autonomy of each circle, but enabling us to do together what we can't do in isolation and bring that all to greater light and awareness um, by creating some of the marketplace, matching resources, all these things. Um, my experience over the last week to reflect in, in less than two minutes and then go towards convergence has been a super powerful, like quantum confirmation of what I suspected that in the field are everything we could ever need to co-create the future that we want. Um, there, there was like, dozens of new introductions and circles that revealed themselves. And it was like, it's almost overwhelming. And so the strong intuition that um, a few of us on the call have had, um, Sophia, thank you for pointing to the convergence. You know, Pete's been really talking about wanting to get into federating, et cetera, is that, is that that's really the unique niche that probably needs to be filled over the next six to eight weeks is, is really focusing on that convergence federation right relationship. And once that all comes to light with some kind of form, then I think the next steps of how we can really start to match up resources and accelerate will emerge. So, um, so that's, I think, a really powerful place to head. So go ahead, Sophia. If you were to just boil it down to two, two or three questions, Jordan, what questions would you ask? Let's, let's add, okay, so let's, let's build on your question. Um, of we've come together and we've exposed all these threads. They can feel divergent, but they're actually not because we're only working on one thing, <laughs> which is the things that need to be done at this moment in history to solve the grand challenges and create the future. So let's take your question of how we begin to converge and weave as one. As a second question, let's take Hank's question of what we as a group can do to bring begin to bring these diverse projects together and amplify their visibility. And then as a third question, um, let's take Pete's um, emphasis on how we federate and rightly relate sovereigns. Maybe those kind of th things are three powerful 
convergent. How, how does that feel too? I have a suggestion here. Um, yeah, Lisa. I love uh, what Sophia um, uh, recommended in terms of you know coming into convergence and Jordan, what you guided us through through the meditation in the beginning and bringing us you know, to that future state, right, is is a great um, visualization, right, to get through. But I feel like convergence means all of us here need to understand where we're all coming from. And so my suggestion would be, from what I've seen, it, it, it helps and facilitate a convergence is, why don't we all do a, what I call a super one minute superpower introduction where all of us share what is our soul mission? Because right now, right, how can we get to convergence if we don't know everybody here yet? And what, you know, what we feel passionate about, right? What if the question is, who are you? And what is your soul mission? That way we, we know everybody, what perspective, right? And then knowing what we know, what, 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 what is the future that we wish to see that you brought us to? Because we all may have seen a different picture, right? In 2100. So that's just Judy. a question to connect okay. with us. Thanks, Lisa. Judy? I was just thinking that we really would want to keep things extremely simplified in terms of a few shared core values in order to allow us to draw in the largest possible audience of participants who could align with those values before trying to align with tasks. Because there's a unity feeling that makes a task go better if you know you're working with people who care about the same things care about. So from one perspective, we may want to find ways to reach people in short bursts, short interactions, because it's overwhelming to come into a room as a new person with 40 people in the room on a lot of different topics and you don't know the people. And so to use one of the words that Jerry and I both like a lot, we have to get really dendritic in terms of how we reach a person who reaches to more people, how those people communicate some shared values. Thanks, Judy. Yeah, there, there's, I think that's been a powerful theme is although we wanna shift into that doing mode, if we get into tasks too fast, we'll end up alienating people. Uh, so that's an interesting tension to sit on the edge of Kilo. So um, I'm going back to the three questions that you formulated and sort of weaving in perhaps with, you know, what's happened in between. And it seems to me, if I were to try to really simplify, like if you're doing a product, you're looking at minimal viable product, you're looking at offering a service or you're offering something to a person, you want to kind of ask, you know, why the person would show up and what would their feeling be and what would their reason be and so on. And so if I was an organization that's never heard of Meta Project, I'm doing my thing, how would I want to relate in context of these three questions? And so if your three questions were something to the, the first one was what we're talking about can feel very divergent, but it's not. It's all, all these projects are working towards one thing. We're all working towards that one thing that we've spoken about, even if we can't fully articulate. The second one was from Hank's question, you know, what we can, how can we be, or what, what, what can we do as a group to this being together and, you know, amplify this visibility. So it's not just a handful, but, you know, 80, and 80 to 100 people in Meta Project doing something that people in the switches will know, and then it's gonna be, you know, 8,000 to 10,000, and it's gonna be, I don't know, pick your numbers, right? But like, how do we amplify and get visible? And then the third question, Pete's emphasis on how do we federate and you know have, how do we set ourselves in this right relationship? And so if I'm a person coming in, how, 
or a group coming in, I would want to feel like I'm in the right place. And I would feel like I'm in the right place if Meta Project explains very clearly, yes, this is not a divergent thing and there, there's this emergence of all these groups and that's what it looks like and we're all working towards this one thing. And I would feel like, whew, I've landed in a great place. So that brings a particular set of actions. How do we, how do we communicate that? How do we embody that? And, you know, is that true? And if it is, then what does that look like? And then in terms of the convergence or actually in terms of the right relationship, I mean, if I join something, I sure feel good if I feel served, if I feel supported, if I feel helped. Otherwise it's just, you know, I'm already part of too many things. Whereas if it's something that I'm super jazzed, not just because it feels good, but also these meta project folks are truly there to support. They're not telling me what to do. They're supporting me and this whole ecosystem that I now want to be part of. And they're serving me, not telling me. Yeah. And sort of that aspect. And then the amplification, I think that almost you can prepare for it, that you can build for it. There are actions that you can do that are probably fairly obvious, but that comes sort of as a one, two, it comes as a second step. Because when we have, when we just follow naturally, this is week four, if we follow naturally from what has been happening from what you talked about, Jordan, this almost overwhelming amount of introductions and connections and information, which many of us already knew before and it's expanded now when this wave gathering and coming together gets put together in a structured way, in a way that works, that itself is an amplification. Then it's just the communication and connecting and we can prepare for that. But like, I think that's almost a, the second step or the next step. And to Lisa's point about the explaining the soul, I think that is a very good point. I think it would take a whole lot of time right now, but perhaps as people share, maybe we can you know, speak into that as part of the conversation if, if we feel so called and if that's useful. For example, for me, I mean, my, I was already earlier today on a call where they asked about what's your essence. I'm starting to get used to these types of going for the jugular ways of relating right at the beginning of a call or meeting new people. And for me, it's very much being where the emergence is and supporting it how my entire being is supporting it and then what it looks like in the world you know different things okay i'm gonna i want to repeat back to you what i heard you say and then i'm gonna pass it back to sophia hopefully uh, somewhat deftly because there's a few different directions we can go um so so keely what what i what i hear you saying is that you're seeing the next step as um and, and tying in what judy said just really real clarity around purpose and values that create the, the overarching uh, spaciousness that we need, moving that into proper structure as a first step. And then once the, the structure and clarity is present, then a second phase is then kind of the amplification. Is that approximately the... It's that, and I would add just the experience part. How does it feel? How do you want yeah, them to yeah. feel? And you want them to feel like they belong, they're in the right place. And you want them to feel they're supported and served. And so when we have a mo motto that we're going to, I forget what the eight words were, but if you, if you put the creation of the new world, that's better, eight words version, and instead say that Meta Project's goal is to create that new world, it's to support creating that new world and to serve those creating the new world, including ourselves. That is a completely different relationship. And if I come from outside, my experience is I'm here supported. I'm here served. And I got a whole bunch of you know, connections and information and all the other goods, and it's a place to be. Plus it's cool and I get inspired and all that other stuff. The experience, I wanna speak that as on top of what you said. Yeah, that's really critical. That's That's the antidote, I think, to what's happening in the network right now. Um, it's the opposite of trying to form groups under something. It's like being the servant of all 
that's trying to connect and amplify and empower everything that's happening. Uh, that's one of the big tension points in the network. So thank you, Sophia. Okay, um, so uh, Sophia, I'm gonna pass it back to you and there's a couple different directions we could go. You suggested a fishbowl, Lisa suggested um, some shares. We've, um, we've got maybe 30 minutes. So either one of those would, would take the remaining time and Jonathan's got his hand up. So I'm gonna let you navigate a little bit here. I love to kind of use this as a suggestion and put it into the fishbowl right now. And I'd love to enjoy, since Judith and Jonathan who already have their hands up, I'd love if you could keep your cameras on so we could be the first in the fishbowl. <laughs> and then um, everybody else would turn off their cameras. Uh, the idea is that whenever you feel called with the cameras off to step into the circle, please turn your camera on. And then one of us who has our cameras on will turn it off once we feel complete. So again, very easy, just turn off the camera for now. If you just should listen in to this dialogue between myself, Judith and Jonathan. Um, and once you feel called to uh, step into the fishbowl, you just turn on your camera. So, um, and I'm gonna start with a question. Uh, Wendy and Hank, would it be okay to turn off the camera? The idea of turning off the camera is simply that the focus of the dialogue be, remains between these people who have their cameras on. So we're not talking to the whole group. I'm right now talking to Jonathan and I'm right now talking to Judith in a more intimate setting. And I will begin with this question. What do you see possible in and through this group that would support what you do? And if someone could write it down on the chat, that would be super helpful. What do you see possible in and through this group that would support what you do? And I'll do my best to model it in a very short amount of time while also answering what Lisa was asking in relationship to or asking us, what is it that we do and what is it our superpower? So what I see possible in this group and again, Judith and Jonathan, you can answer the question or you can go into the dialogue. I'll just give my short answer here. Uh, what is it possible in this group is um, this collective intelligence that I would never be able to come up with my own. <laughs> the level of insight and expertise is like it's a, an accelerator of my own learning, right? And I am particularly um, attuning to this mapping component or making the system visible to itself in ways that are um, easy to understand and relate. And that is at the same time inviting everybody to start thinking differently in terms of, oh, I see now I'm part of this larger network. Oh, I see these 100 other circles. Oh, wow, imagine what is right possible to be able to see if I am maybe redundantly doing something that someone else is already doing so that I could coordinate efforts with them and then maybe amplify something else. So the mapping in and of itself to me, is, it's a valuable thing that supports what I am up to, which relates to as well, particularly like investment, uh, impact investment or philanthropy or people who are also trying to do things, right? Or resources. And they need to focus on where would be more, the most leverage points and or what are the greatest ideas. And again, this mapping process and a culture and a community that maintains it as alive and not as a dead static thing is what I see as the greatest potential low hanging fruit right now. This is mine. I'd love to hear Jonathan, Judith, what that kind of brings up for both of you. Um. Like, <clears throat> I'll jump into the fray. Um, I, uh, my personality is that I, <clears throat> I'm an essentialist. I boil things down as I hear them. Um, and there I'm kind of stuck because I got a lot to say and um, but I don't have the energy to write it all down. But that said, um, I feel enormous anger at what the human race has cobbled together so far and calling a 
civilized state of being. I think it's it's borderline brutality run amok. Um, and I believe in the human species ability to figure our way out of this. And I want to create a gigantic global tool that lets people experiment with what do we want it to be? So we can look at that alongside the current shitty place we live in. Um, I want to do that real, real, real badly. Uh, I've had that want for, gosh, six years now. Um, what can this group do for me? Talk with me? Um, give me some money. Because <laughs> I'm dying here. <laughs> I think that that covers it. Oh, 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 regarding superpowers, um, I also like to think uh, that each of us has a context we're willing to or even eager to explore that we don't know enough about. And so that's an alternative component to here's my superpower. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Okay, I guess it's my turn. Um, I think that, that when I was trying to get to the essence, I ended up with hope, shared talents, and better world <laughs> as an, a great simplification. And I like the word talents because I'm not, superpower has a set apart quality to it. And I think each person in every situation has multiple talents they bring to that situation. And if you're trying to label, well, my talent is X, chances are you won't even say that. But if we invite people to help in whatever way they feel can best contribute, I think that will create the connected community that we want to have. And the actual outcome is so diverse in its scope and, and character that I think it's more important to create the mechanism than the goals, targets, and measures. Could you speak a little bit more about mechanisms? And I, I'm, you know, Pete, well, our, our project manager, start feeling also tickly to start, start just turn on their cameras, please do. <laughs> well, go ahead, Judy. Well, I, I think I'm trying to figure out a way. I don't know how to say this exactly, but I think self-actualization and group actualization would summarize the desired outcome. I think it's sometimes hard to say what the goal is and if you make the goal too big and too distant, it's impossible to task yourself toward it. But if we can define, and the people who see further will automatically see further. They'll see that this is part of these three domains and we need to share it in those directions. And so I'm trying to find the right balance between the individual skills and contribution and commitment that we need to feel and the energy that those individuals would share with other communities with whom they interact that will let this grow to the scope we would dream it would reach. Thank you, Judy. Lisa, do you wanna just jump in? Hi, um, so who am I? I am an intuitive dot connector. Uh, my superpower is connecting the dots and helping people find who they seek and what they seek. Uh, because I believe we all have superpower gifts and we all have passion projects when we know about what we, uh, you know, who we are, our superpower gifts and our mission pro projects, then we can all connect the dots actively. And so my sole mission is to connect conscious super connectors, change makers and light leaders so that we can be stronger together as one. And how we can do that is to activate all of us, all of our superpower gifts, all of our soul missions, because if we are supported on our soul mission, right, then we can come together as one to, um, to uplift humanity together. So I would love to know, uh, Sophia, 
who are you and, and that, uh, you know, what is your superpower and what is your soul mission and that everybody who comes on as well. Thank you, Lisa. So I'm sitting between what Judy said and what I'm hearing from you kind of sitting in between in relationship to like defining a particular thing. I think and maybe it's a similar thing to what she's just mentioned, like sometimes like perhaps the, the superpower is maybe the lowest hanging fruit that is ready to be harvested or a, 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 a gift, right? Or a capability that is um, already very tangible to me, but that does not mean that I'm not going to continue to develop other right so, yeah um, so the, different powers so the way, um, yeah the way i think of superpowers is actually we have lots of them right it's mm -hmm. when you want to share and who you want to share when the time calls because some people right connecting the dots is about sharing the superpowers that connects with the next person I mean, we have lots of gifts right lots of talents it doesn't mean we're pigeonholed to one right what is it that you feel at the right moment to share at this moment right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's that's really what that is about so in in answering your question i would say um there's something <laughs> it's a signature of my own as a sentence but also as a thing <laughs> practice i call it hosting futures so to host that which is yet intangible and unseen and to make those intangibles and unseen things visible is one of the kind of core gifts um, that I've been uh, preparing to host. And that applies in many different areas, right? From investment to project management to companies and all that. And so I really have what Judith has mentioned in relationship to when it is the time for people to, who, who, who needs to see what in order to be able to uh, already feel engaged to um, um, in, to into action? Because if I see too much and it's overwhelming, then I can freeze. But if I don't see enough, I'm not going to move, right? So you're asking, where are the superpowers? Because that's what you need in order to activate your own superpower of connector and super connector in a way. Yeah. Um, and when I yeah that that that's just what's coming up for me and i'll step back as jordan and eric step in so just one thing right connecting the dots means just sharing the things that activates remembrance right so so when when we all share it will see something in us right it's like an aha so with that jordan would love to invite you to share who are you what is your superpower that you would like to share today in your soul mission yeah, thanks, Lisa. So pulling, pulling some of these threads, um, I think my essence is a creator that brings intention into reality. Mm -hmm. And I try to align that as close as I can with the highest intention that I can possibly conceptualize and come into relationship with. Um, and as it relates here and back to like these converging threads. The, I think the obvious vision and realization is that all the parts and pieces are here. And if they're not here, one of us on this call knows it or one of the other people knows them. It's all within one degree and it's all shown up at the right time. And so I think this focus on really figuring out how we, how we can serve that whole emergence and rightly relate to each other and celebrate all the different organizations and circles that are like springing up, like it's like springing up from a very deep source, right? Because there's something that wants to emerge. So we can expect that in every language and every culture and every tribe, this is being put on people's hearts and they're starting to move. And so I think this idea of really listening to and figuring out who we are how we can amplify that, you know? And then another big theme I think that's emerging is liberating people to contribute to multiple organizations or, or circles and not being subordinate to any one. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I think this idea of flipping the whole org chart upside down and turning it into an ecosystem is so critical. 
um, because once we understand those superpowers and we get greater visibility into all the projects that are on the map that we didn't know existed, then we can start to better align and optimize to those. So maybe those are just a, a couple. So I, I'm feeling like in the field, that's really the issue right now. It's like the, the right relationship and figuring out how we can serve this emergence and connect. If we can get that right, everything else is possible. If we don't get that right and we stay separated and divided against all these different circles, we're gonna we're gonna fail, I think, to accomplish what we need to in the time we have. So thank you for sharing that, right? So Jordan, you are the super connector of the meta project, right? All of us, when we show up, we're dots, right? So the, the question when we have conversation is connect by right, all the dots, us, you know, within us and where we have lots of dots, right? So, so it's really about that, right? Meta, getting back to basics again, right? The data level almost. So yeah. Um, so and Eric, let's have Eric share. Who are you? What is your superpower that you would like to share today? And what is your soul mission? Mm -hmm. um... That question being so difficult to answer, but <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. Um, so uh, I've talked a lot to Vincent, and then it's it's kind of like Vincent Arena, and um, a bit also to Jordan and some other people. And for me, is creating infrastructure and creating like an online living library or creating something like an navigation system. Like for me, the whole mapping exercise is interesting, but I've, I, I thought about what is the most fundamental structure that can handle all of the complexity. And it is not a simple structure, but it can hold it. And it's a container and it's um, one, one way of, Putting that into words is like when I go to the my favorite museum, which is about uh, it's an ethnographic museum. Then it's all about masks from different cultures, and it's about putting it in the right kind of light. That's one way of putting it, but, but I think it's much more profound. There's so many levels to this. Yeah, I think so did, so it's and interaction design. That's that's what I do. I, I'm an architect of interactions of um, and gluing it all together and going from the depth of how does art really work or how does um, how does conflict mediation work how does proper governance work and and then also how to then structure it in such a way that it's it oh. becomes yeah, feasible, yeah. All the diversity because it's a huge amount of diversity. Yeah. So, so Eric, right? The reason why we're doing this exercise, right? And is and again, right? Think of it as is everything is a is a learning. We have one minute to make an impression on someone. All of us, right? We are bombarded by noise, right? So, so the reason why these questions <laughs> exist is because. Um, think back on it. Like, what is if you have only one minute, right, to make an impression of who you are? What is it that you want to share? So the next person may be like, I need to talk with you again so that I can deep dive at the next layer. You see, right? Because when you share almost too much within the one minute superpower gifts, you lost attention span. Right? Lisa, it's just that I feel like you're offering a different format within the fishbowl. The fishbowl would be more like a more of this dialogue space and, and more unstructured. Um, I feel like what you're offering will be more like a pitch or a circle, like a, you know, like a rapid fire and more dynamic, which I feel is a wonderful kind of invitation and structure. But um, I, I purposefully left it open so that through the dialogue, there can be more emergence this is the format of the fishbowl itself right and we could change the format um if necessary but i was hearing eric speak from that space um and yeah, not gonna, yeah, yeah to edit that yeah thank thanks sophia and thank you lisa uh, okay so so as we're coming up we have 15 minutes left here and i'm gonna maybe it's our I, format is already up. done yeah no no i don't think so i'm gonna i'd like to invite um i think we can pull a few threads here um Based on what Judy said, and what Kilu said, and what Eric said, bringing those back around to 
and what you said, Sophia, on the convergence. Um, using Eric's words of this, what what is the most fundamental structure that can hold all the complexity? That that's like this issue of of kind of federating and what it feels like the next step is. I think you know it's like we want to come together and there's a right level of structure or a minimum viable fundamental structure without which we can't we can't really move right. We can't really feel. Um, so can I invite? Pete into the fishbowl, um, who I've been having some deep, deep kind of dialogue with on this issue of federating and structure and right relationship. And maybe um, Pete and Eric, let, let's have a dialogue here on what the hypothesized next steps are on federation, right relationship, and bringing these circles into some kind of structure that then could be again to resonate. I've got a um, I've got a, stru a structure I would propose, um, and during the meeting I've I've kind of written it up, and uh, I feel like this breaks fishbowl a little bit, but maybe I'll just post this um, uh, into the chat. Looks like I'll have to do it in two pieces. So let me talk through this real quick. And Eric and I actually have an interesting uh, connection we might get to. Um, Eric's interested in a, um, in a channel or a, a, a group maybe um, on process and psychology and things like that. Um, so let me go through these uh, a little bit fast. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of detail here, so I apologize for that. Um, it's also very high level, and I apologize for that. Um, but this is a way that I think we can work together and also massively uh, in federation. So I have this word, I've been using sovereign, but it could be pod or circle. And this write-up is pods. Um, so pods are either one person um, or it's more than one person. Maybe it's two people or three people or seven people or 50 people. Um, pods are autonomous. They decide what they're going to do. Um, nobody else tells them you have to do this. And, you know, if you don't do it, I'm not going to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Pods are autonomous. They're sovereign. Sovereign just means that whoever is the sovereign or, or sovereign has absolute agency, absolute authority to be, to be deciding what they're doing. So you have these autonomous. That, and, and just yes. to quickly put in, that makes all cooperation voluntary. Right, so we start with individual sovereigns who voluntarily come into these circles or pods or sovereigns that are multiple, and that's voluntary. And then those those can in turn make voluntary commitments. So we're building. I guess what I'm trying to do is is establish the pattern. We're building a bottom up, empowered system of cooperation built entirely on voluntary commitments to each other. And that autonomy and agency over yourself allows you to to give 100% of yourself to that goal. Um, so instead of subjugating your goal to, you know, a, a leadership authorities, you know, and what they think your goal should be, it's like, I have 100% focus on my mission. Uh, so internally, pods will have lots of different ways of, of governing themselves. And that's for a discussion for another time. Um, pods have to be really focused on their, their mission and goals um, and autonomy lets them do that. Pods talk about what they can do um, and what they're interested in, in doing with other pods. Um, I started adding uh, hashtag meta project pods to differentiate. So far I've, I've talked about, you know, anybody could be a pod doing anything, right? But it's we, when we start to coordinate we have to have some light agreements about what a uh, meta project pod would be doing. So there's things like we uh, look to the network for guidance. Uh, there's another thing called request for guidance we can talk about. Uh, crucially, as Jordan said, meta project pods make commitments with other pods. Um, so they, they say, I'll be responsible for publishing a newsletter and you can count on that. Or I'll be responsible for, as a, as a pod, I'll be responsible for making sure that we have a chat channel that works. Um, 
so then uh, there's the, the whole project management thing happens within pods now. It doesn't happen over the whole project, over the whole meta project, because that's too much to manage. And different pods may need to manage themselves differently, depending on who they're who they are, what they're doing, what their cultural background is. So we want to have pods that help other pods with process and project management. But at the, you know, at the foundational level, you get to manage your, your pod however it needs to be managed. People aren't going to be telling you how to do that because you're autonomous. Um, so then the other critical uh, coordination thing is that meta project pods report out on their status on make on their commitments to other people commitments are publicly transparent how it's going uh, is publicly transparent and there will be pods that roll up that information so you can say uh, we're this is you know how we're doing against our our overall overarching goals so those overarching goals, um, thanks to Jerry Mikulski, Jerry's got a, a, a nice way of kind of describing the map of all the things that need to get done to create a better world. He calls that a mosaic. And in that mosaic, there's individual tiles, lots of little tiles. There's a tile for um, psychological processes. There's a tile for chat systems uh, or, or even a, maybe a bigger tile that's asynchronous communication systems and a smaller tile that's a chat system and another smaller child, uh, tile that's email or something. Um, uh, there's tiles for you know, reporting mapping uh, and reporting what the, the network is doing. Lots of tiles. Um, the the I've I've kind of gone through the meta meta tiles so far, but uh, you would also expect in a better world there's tiles for social justice and tiles for soil health and tiles for water and tiles for conflict uh, resolution things like that. Um, and that's kind of the 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 main thing. Lots of autonomous pods coordinating through agreements with other pods in the network and a big network that gets the work of making a better world done. That's beautiful, thanks Pete. So I don't wanna get into it here, but from like, I try to look for triangulations from multiple fields that validate some theme. And the idea of a network of commitments made and kept is really, really central to uh, from like Michael Linton's 40 years studying community currency to my background in construction and lean. It's all about commitments made and kept that are the dependencies that allow us to bring forward whatever it is that we're going to do. And as I'm, so that all seems approximately right. The other, the other big thing that the structure that we've been discussing accomplishes is that none of those sovereigns or pods is subordinate to anything else. They're all self-organizing and autonomous and choosing to voluntarily cooperate. And because they are sovereign voluntary participants, they can leave at any time, right? And that's a really critical check on the direction and governance and things that we're vesting. And then to tie this out to your work, Eric, I think you've done 15 years of mapping of the different like functions or circles or pods or sovereigns that need to relate to each other in some fashion. And so I think if we could then take some of your work like we were working on this week a little bit and start to really gain our intuition for which of those need to emerge in what order and, and the mm -hmm. process flows, we could get a long way down the field towards something pretty powerful. Yeah, and uh, there, there's something about being I wrote it in this chat a bit like on one end there's this like pragmatic and flow and and and, and connection part where we try to figure out how are we in this right relationship and and all these kind of aspects of that and I've I've also focused on like really trying to figure out the most complex uh, architecture the most complex amount of information and how to break that down that's a completely different job and I don't want them to get in the way of each other. Um, yeah. And I, I love the thoughts idea. I would like. I would love to see it written down to understand properly. Is this going to create a good, nice flow? 
and then I'd be fully be able to go there. And then the other part of me is like, okay, then the highest level of complexity, how do we do that? That's yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I think I think that's really critical. So where I think we're gonna get on track right now is if we have teams who are passionate about working on the absolute outside greatest amount of abstraction and complexity that we can possibly get our minds around and making sure that we're not making sure that whatever we're doing won't violate those principles, right? Because if we don't do that, we're never going to bring the whole into existence. But, but it's really critical what you just said. That has to be completely separated from the individual on the ground projects that would be totally overwhelmed and distracted by that. And so I think it's 100% of both those paths, right? So we need a team working on the absolute outer reaches of our ability to abstract and architect the most complex recognizing how feeble we are in that and then a hundred percent of not having the ground up you know boots on the ground distracted by that level yeah i think so i, I think that's about it yeah uh, for for how well articulated it can come out now <laughs> wendy just turn on your video and i wonder jordan if we just have three minutes left just ask everyone to come back yeah yeah let's let's go let's come back uh into video and we're going to get, yeah, the, yeah. Okay, so, so as, as usual, um, I will, I'm going to stay on um, for a little bit after the, the call if anybody would like to hang out and continue the dialogue. And for anybody that needs to jump off, um, I just want to create a little soft close here and I'll, I'll save time for you, Wendy, before the top of the hour. Um, but I think what we just experienced was a group convergence kind of towards the same intuition that I'm experiencing in a lot of different calls, which is the revalidation that the unique superpowers to use Lisa's words and passion projects that we're each engaged in are part of something bigger. And it's about connecting and aligning those dots. And our principal mission, I think, is to figure out what those needs are and how to serve, support, empower, make visible, make possible what we've all been struggling to do in isolation that we can only do together. And it seems like the pathway to do that is through something like what, what Pete just articulated that in my mind is perfectly compatible with things that, that Eric and I have studied on the right relationship that protects the sovereignty and self-organization and autonomy of each individual circle, working group, any structure that's moving, um, which are not subordinate to anything, but can voluntarily choose to support lots of different efforts. Um, so like the mapping sovereign, for instance, could support lots of different emergent groups. Um, and I think that's a critical kind of anti-pattern to what's happening right now in the network where we're tending to try to compete for people and kind of segregate things out. So it's just total openness. So, um, so anyway, with that, what I'm gonna try to do um, for anybody that needs to jump off is um, do a feeble job <laughs> of trying to reflect this all back our first four weeks and kind of this hypothesized plan of action of how we can converge and, and put some of these pieces together. Um, if that's agreeable to some people, um, Pete and Forrest and um, many others have suggested that that federation needs to have some basic, basic overarching agreements um, that can serve as templates for a right relationship among all the sovereigns and um, also modeled at the meta project level. So. Um, we'll be working on that and then I'll, I'll uh, keep reporting out. So that's all for me. Wendy, I'll, I'll give you the last, uh, the last words here and then I'll stay on. And if anybody needs to jump, love you, appreciate you. And we'll communicate soon. Yeah, just the, the thought that, um, that Eric was sharing about working at both ends, the high level of abstraction, which brings in a whole stack of things that Mark Antoine is very good at you know, epistemology and such really, really important things and values um, and the bottom. And if we, if we can put the, say, Jerry's framework up with what we've already worked on today, along with what Eric's done and see if we can find commonalities quite often when I'm mapping across things that um, are very complex, there's a lot of synergy. It's just the words, but then sometimes you can find frictions between the actual concepts and you need to name them. So if anyone wants to to play with that, um, Eric, I'd be quite happy to work with you on that. 
this is something I do all the time with, at, you know, quite high level abstract things, but I'm a very practical person. <laughs> you know, I do lots of very simple things at the bottom end. So be people who specialize in the realm, but I know most of us actually do do both ends because, so, so, yeah, we do. Wendy, I just wanted to, uh, wanted to tie in um, somebody else. Uh, I guess it was Bill Larson, I think, brought that up, what you just said, and, and you've been really good at advocating this from your standpoint, but there's both like the tremendous power and the synergies and what's possible. You and Bill both brought up this week that the flip side of that is that there are going to be frictions, right? We've all been kind of boxed into these different ideological constructs that kind of look like they're conflicting. Maybe in some cases they are, maybe it's the way that they've been framed. And so um, Bill was really advocating this week that if we don't figure out how to lean into those and acknowledge them, like mm -hmm. not only acknowledging the power of the synergies and the overlap, but where there's genuine difference, differences and then reaffirming that despite those differences there's things we can practically work towards and maybe ways to start resolving those over time so i think that's a really critical theme mm. from the chat i'm also hearing i wonder if there is a pod of pollinators and you know the the super connectors as lisa was also mentioning that would kind of pop into different groups and be kind of our in-between pod crew to let people know what's happening. That's just what's happening in the chat a little bit. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of a gypsy that way, Sophia. <laughs> I'll be happy to pollinate. Forced. Sure, thank you. Um, I guess for one thing um, 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 to maybe add in as a consideration, I haven't heard a conversation about it, and that is to potentially intentionally put in a pause between the two six-week sprints. And so I wanted to add that in as a possibility of considering a three-week pause that is considered for potentially like digestion. and fermentation and then seeing what arises thanks for us yeah right now we we currently have it scheduled for um for a one-week pause so we could if we felt like it was wise to do it longer but um, that's the the six week is just purely about reflection digesting and learning improving before we, we cycle again um and so that's really built in and we can we can discuss the length and balance it against the urgency of what we're up against as the world and the right amount of time to really, really reflect. But I agree that's a critical part of this process. If I might reflect on <clears throat> uh, the interesting component of the use of the word urgency. And uh, I would um, invite, maybe it's not, I, I don't know how common the view is, but my view is benevolence is always unfolding. And that indeed, we don't have an urgency. We just have to be allowing for what the rest, the other 95% of reality is wanting to direct us to do in order to reduce suffering at the greatest possible rate. And if there's any urgency, that's the only urgency because the outcome of humanity thriving within me is already clearly done. And so now what I want to do is accelerate short name on a time of suffering for those on the planet suffering. Thanks, Forrest. Pete? Thanks, Forrest, and thanks, Jordan. Uh, Forrest's mention of, of uh, the six-week cycles uh, re reminds me to reflect. Um, uh, I like I, I like calling those cycles better than sprints uh, for kind of historical reasons. Sprints has a pretty specific meaning uh, to some of us, um, and I think cycle covers it better uh, for the the meta project. Um, and then thinking of these autonomous pods or sovereigns, 
working within the meta project, I think some of them will have maybe longer cycles and some of them will certainly have shorter cycles. So the, the groups that I'm in that uh, a lot of them are oriented towards software development, but, but not all of them. Uh, we run on, on two week sprint cycles. Um, and so I can imagine, you know, I, I, what I imagine is that um, I like the, the overall cycle of, of six weeks as a, as a, and, a, and a pause as a way of reflecting over the whole meta project. And then I think inevitably different pods will, will be running at different drum beats. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. It, it, it seems like on most boots on the ground projects, it's, it's a one to two week, it's a one to two week pulse. Um, and then as you get up to higher levels of abstraction, we don't want to overwhelm. Um, and then six weeks is what, what I think that actually reflects is something like seasons or quarters that we're kind of working with just subdivided um, to have a little bit of a greater frequency than a quarterly pulse. And Judy and others that have worked in large, large organizations, we kind of all arrived at that half quarterly pulse is maybe a good highest level overview to navigate to. Thanks, Pete. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask the people that are still here for um, divergent opinions. We have like, I think, a strong emphasis that um, that's, I think, becoming increasingly clear that there's more resources, relationships, projects within one degree of us than we thought. As we've, as we brought this group together, that's become more clear. Um, as, as we get ready to expand again, it's going to be Come even more clear, and I think what we'll immediately see is that we've got everything we need, um, and the issue is going to be how to coordinate it. And so we had that dialogue. Is there anybody who's feeling um, like that's not the proper path forward, or that move towards kind of um, formalizing something along the lines of what what Pete and Eric have suggested as our basic way of of working together, moving towards some kind of templates of constitutions, MOUs, those kind of things. Is there anybody who feels that would not be the proper path or we're missing something significant? Jonathan. Um, it's a little bit of a tickle. I'm not sure I'm objecting to anything, but um, a barrier to entry comes to mind. Um, and by that, I mean learning curve, approaching a new technology, finding where it is, um, that yeah. uh, remains an open question for me. That's super critical. I'm going to just drop in the chat here too, like people without projects as a as a general theme. But there's there's a certain level of this. It's like people who are forming and and doing projects and pretty well organized. And then Jonathan, I think that your point is really we got to create that full spectrum of easy engagement, or else we'll have unnecessary bottlenecks and limitations we don't want. So great, great point. I agree completely. Wendy. Um, I've been reading this book a bit and it's got a lot of, um, I think, good examples of how movements that have been very challenging over time have been grown and, and curated. And there's something very, very um, interesting about the, well, obviously the selection of platforms and such, but more the delib how, delib uh, how to deliberate around knowing when someone's ready to come in and get the fact that it's actually a messy thing. You're not declaring what the structure is. Um, and just knowing, because I think all of us know that, you know, everyone here is actually ready for that conversation. We've got different versions of it. So there's two things there. There's a lot of really useful information there about the platforms. There's also, and Pete and I have been talking about this yesterday, we did. There's a lot of very um, useful information about older platforms, funnily enough, um, but not that's not what I'm thinking about. There's a whole lot of very um, important points to take in around context. So when you guys can gather, you're gathering in your own country and I don't have a context for understanding you. My context is Australia and it's a different one. And, and that gulf 
um, having, and, and they put this in the last chapter, that table that we can physically sit around, the physicality of this is something that we really have to keep on thinking about how we weave that in. Um, and it ha it's a constant gardening thing. How can we make sure there's a physicality there that means that a sovereign could be there in some way, in a tangible way, so you've got a real human, but then that doesn't take over from what the group can do together. Um, and we mustn't lose that tangibility because it's what we know and how we know things. Um, anyway, there's, there's many, many things I could say, but um, I'd invite anyone who's interested in talking about the book and the implications of that book. It would help me a bit, um, even if it's just so, me. So and my when, Wendy, can I... Um... Can I pull a little bit? Um, so if, if you were if you were to try to articulate like two, three, four kind of key principles based on your understanding of the book that you think we need to make sure we're honoring over yeah. the next six to eight weeks, would, yeah. would you have a stab at that? Yeah. So the first one is that there's more value in the text that we've created already than people understand or believe. And doubling down on that as soon as possible would be very useful there's so much yeah. wisdom in the room and we're missing the divergence and the convergence on that that's already there in the text and know that yeah. gal the guy who wrote that book didn't have that technology and i'm fairly sure did not apply it when he wrote the book he did it by lots of long slow study a phd we don't have that time yeah. um the second thing is that context is actually supremely important in terms of how people um, actually get these sovereigns working. So it's so much easier to be a sovereign over something that's tactile because you can move it and handle it. And that's just at the basics of sense making, you know, as well, certainly applying it in a, in a way. Um, and I guess the third thing is that um, the movements that they're describing, some of them are, you know, from the 1600s but some of them are sort of yesterday they're all saying that these quiet spaces where we can be completely ourselves are really ex important and to curate and keep those don't lose them because that's where something can really be raised quickly that's deeply concerning but if you grow too fast what happens is those deeply concerning things cause disorder in the system so you've got to have these sort of back channels, but importantly, tighter communities where you can pretty much say anything and no one's going to whack you over the head. You put one person in who's not ready for that and the whole thing can fall apart. And I had some experience with that in my own community in scouting just last night. Um, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh, I thought I got this. And, you know, it just things fall out and they fall apart and they take a long time to put back together again. So you sort of got to go steady, steady a little bit. Um, it's great to bring in other people. You've got to really be careful to understand how ready those people are um, and whether you can sustain bringing them in. Are they ready to be that brave? Okay. Yeah, I'm Wendy. Just to create space, I won't reflect on what you said. I just invite you to bring more of that. And I'll just say that's one of the biggest things that's bothering me in my intuition or that I haven't resolved is the rate at which we um, manage that expansion versus letting it happen at the rate that it wants to naturally happen and how we how we rightly balance like on the edge of that. So I think that's that's a um, that's a whole area that warrants like a working group or whatever, but it's um, it's a significant question. So thank you for raising that. I'd like to clarify this with someone right after the call, because I have an insight that I'd like to clarify if somebody could support me there. Uh, Forrest? I'm sure. Um, thank you. I um, resonate deeply also with what Wendy just shared. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm personally struck by continuing to try to reflect back to how does nature do things? 
And uh, so what I was feeling it was the spiral, and that spirals show up in nature everywhere. And so uh, when I think about a spiral, it's generally, at least when I feel that spiral, it starts from a center and then get, moves outwards from that center. And, uh, um, and so then the question that comes to mind is how important it is to be really clear about what are the core pieces and what drives what in terms of all the pieces that we can identify that need to get done, what really needs to be done sequentially versus in parallel and things of that nature. And I would contend that the things that we've been discussing in the direction you're heading um, aligns with that, meaning what is our core kind of umbrella knowing that it can change, but whatever those words, transforming the earth, maybe that, who knows. And then what are the kind of values that we're going to do, knowing that there's tons of ways of saying universal values, so the language may change over time, but at least there's a starting point. And then from that, then it starts to drive into the, what are the kind of principles we're aligning around. And um, I'm, right now, that clarity doesn't really exist. And so it feels like that clarity is needed before one would jump in or go to a trust manifesto or a constitution or something. And the piece that also feels prior to that is actually gaining clarity about the participants, which goes back to what Wendy was talking about, what, what, what is in and what is out and trying to understand those distinctions and therefore having a um, really what I think is really important in the language of it, I don't think is perfect, but what I've been calling a hard gated community. It basically means that indeed you are really clear about what's in and what's not in. And, and you have a fair process both for allowing in and for moving out in both directions. And so those are the things that are coming to mind in terms of potential um, aspects of next steps. Anybody else has, has thoughts on that hard gated community aspect, the boundary aspects and the, the pace? Uh, those are deep topics. Uh, Jonathan, thanks Forrest. Great, um, great uh, yeah. comments. Awesome. Uh, Pete, you wanna go first, please? Uh, yeah, sure, thanks Jonathan. So that hard gated community to me is a sovereign, a pod. Um, and that's where it's important. The meta project, I think, is a movement that you join by affiliating and being a good citizen and you put a hashtag. Um, so I, I don't think that we need a hard gated community for the meta project. I think you show up and you say, I'm part of the meta project and I'm working like this. And you, other sovereigns would go, yeah, that one is working with us. Some of the sovereigns that will join um, won't be working with us. And, the, and everybody else has to point at that one and say, that one has the hashtag meta project. It's, it's uh, bullshit. Um, that one's not us. <laughs> but that's the way the, the hard gated community for me is, is the sovereign and a small group. Awesome. Yeah, so I would, they're... at least for me, I would invite that um, at this early stage, the uh, the initial conditions are so important in terms of what's being pulled together and what ends up having long term effect. That while Pete, I can align with it as the long term when the clarity about citizenship is, because as citizenship is a hard-gated community. I mean, if you think about citizenship practically any place at a particularly scale we're talking about, there's very clear guidelines, rules, methodologies, agreements that are put in place. And we're early in forming that. And so it's intuitive right now. And I think that we'll probably do fine with it, but it's just things yeah. coming to I, mind. I wouldn't so, say, so I, I don't think we should have citizens of the Meta Project. I think we should have community members in a, in a network. So 
already the folks here have a, a rough consensus about what's you know what feels good and what doesn't feel good what's in and what's out and i think we'll continue to evolve that as a community process um and not so much again not so much you know gate i think there's so so a critical issue is like we kind of understand what organic produce is and it's kind of like whether you set up a certifying body so to speak and like like somebody who controls what is part of the meta project or not or whether you let people raise their hand and go, oh, that's me too. I have the same thing on my heart, like, you know, and then the community kind of decides. Um, so that that's a really critical issue that I don't think we just resolved in that conversation, but but I think it it warrants one. Um, and and I think and I think what what Forrest is saying, I just want to validate what Forrest is saying, what Pete's saying. What Forrest is saying is that if we don't get the DNA right, we're sunk. And so it's critical that we clearly define it. And what Pete's saying is maybe we shouldn't have like a central authority that determines that. Um, and so I wonder if we can be so absolutely clear and forge such a strong culture that it's, um, it creates the field that, that makes that obvious. But we, I think that's a question. Community, I think, is, is a conversation and not so much starting conditions. Can, can I jump in here? Yeah, please. Jump. Yeah, okay? thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, you bet. Um, so I want to jump on the idea of superpower, passion, volunteering, being a sovereign, stating a responsibility, joining a community voluntarily, all of this. I suddenly had this flash that our emotions are a good thing to use uh, for this in the following way. Um, the question uh, regarding your emotions is simple. Do you feel involved? Do you feel like you're contributing? Um, are, are people nurturing that? Are people grateful for it? Do you feel involved? And I think if we went to each person and they said, no, I, I don't, or yes, I do. We would find that that satisfies the um, governance model. You know, are we on the right track? Um, you know, are we all working together as a great network? Um, and are we being utilized to our fullest? So again, do you feel involved? I, to, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I just wanted to say it. What Mr. Fuller would say that each of us is the most sensitive measuring device we could possibly imagine. So I think that's, yeah, uh, that's exactly. very true. Uh, Judy, Vincent, and then uh, David sent in the back channel. He would like to add something. I'd just like to, to sensitize the group to thinking about how to be as open as possible to engage the most creative people and minds working in very diverse areas. Because if we focus too soon, we lose a lot of opportunity and we become, I fear we would become exclusive. And that's the opposite of what our spoken intent is here. And I wonder if there isn't a lot of opportunity for individuals to catalyze small groups of action wherever they may be, wherever they encounter a group of people with shared goals and yes, those exactly. groups that grow. And so I think we have to be sure our values are sound. That's, that's in my mind, the most critical thing, but human nature will take things toward action and activity. If you have energetic people with good intent and it would be unfortunate if we restricted that in some way. I think, yeah, thanks, Judy. As far as I can tell, I think that's the basic unit. It's like trying to create some, some hope and some inspiration, and then it's individuals in their own time and place fully empowered to spin up autonomous mm -hmm. groups to meet the needs they see with whoever they can gather. And then that collective supporting each other, I think, is the makings of the movement as best we can tell. There's mm -hmm. also an opportunity that I would 
would shift and, and sort of hand to Pete with apologies, because I don't know the right mechanism to sort of say, if you need something, let us know, we might be able to help. <laughs> and allow that to be part of the process and currency of how we extend ourselves to the world and hope that then people will emulate that approach. We've, we've started to try to, we haven't done a very good job at bootstrapping that yet, but the, there's an intent to, that's kind of what rest, request for guidance is actually. <laughs> Um, and it would be lovely to involve more people on that. Hey, I need help from this network, whatever it is. And can you help me? Thanks, Judy. That's it. I wanted to respond to the point about the hard or semi-permeable membrane, like the boundaries of MetaProject. I found this image, which I think can help me explain. So as a sort of mapper of networks of networks, um, I'm aware of a few different network of networks that want to be mapped. And so that always is begging the question to me is that, do you make individual maps of each one of these? So like, you know, with like, let's say, you know, one of these, like this blue one here is meta project. Um, like we have about, you know, 30 people and 30 projects currently, um, but that might grow rapidly. There are some other network of networks that are much larger in the in the order of magnitude of like thousands to tens of thousands. Not saying that um, the meta project won't grow bigger than that, but to say that it is helpful to have a sense of like where the current boundary is roughly and like where that boundary should be over time, like a dotted line saying we want to like move here, because when you're mapping like ecosystems like this. Right. It's like, okay, are we creating a map of like the local town or like of the globe or the universe? Because depending on the scale, it's going to determine how we actually design it. Um, and yeah, I feel some tension because I, I feel the desire to both um, create outputs and, and create things that feel right for the like intimacy and the scale of Meta Project currently while also trying to think in terms of the future and how Meta Project will like kind of start intersecting with these other networks uh, that are also doing similar activities. And so maybe one of the, the questions that could answer this dilemma is what, what do partnerships look like with Meta Project? How, how do we uh, partner and federate with other network of networks that are doing similar activities and what's the criteria for us to say whether or not that is a good fit because um, yeah it feels like there, there does need to be um, a self um, being able to see the map as like as part of the team creating those maps it's helpful to be able to kind of know where we're drawing the line I guess Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Vincent. Um, let's see, Judy, do you have your hand up from before or? Apologies, I'll get it okay. down. Yeah, so over to you, Pete, and, um, and Vincent, just to say that the, the idea of the Meta Project is that there's only one thing in the world and that we, so even if people don't know we're working on the same thing, we are, right? So <laughs> it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a fuzzy issue, but it's it's kind of the critical issue that we're grappling with here. Um, and so I think that's the right question. And then we need to look at both of both all sides of that. So Pete. Um, I that's a great question, Vincent. And I think the the way partnership with the Meta Project works is it, it's it's not a partnership with the Meta Project. It's partnerships between some of the sovereigns that happen to be in Meta Project and probably other things too, right? So Massive Wiki might be part of CTA and it might be part of Meta Project. And so you could say that Meta Project and CTA are working together, but it's kind of the wrong, the wrong Zoom thing. What you would say is Massive Wiki is a Meta Project project and a CTA project. 
and it's also its own sovereign that's you know working with other sovereigns like FedWiki or TiddlyWiki or whatever. Does that make sense? I guess I'm saying, does anyone not belong in the Meta project? Even like the a project out of Exxon Mobil that wants to create clean energy, like is there any you know I, that yeah is there anyone who does not? It, so belong? so I think it's a it's an issue of. Uh, so yes, there are there are lots of people that don't don't belong because if they're working in a way that's antithetical to the future that we're trying to build, um, then it's then we're probably not going to want to lend our collective energy to that. But if they're um, doing both, they're working for and, good and, and they're working and against it, exactly. And there's going to be a lot of um, it's like a big foreign relations problem, right? Because there's going to be a entire spectrum of consciousness, right? And there's going to be lots of people who think that they're working towards the same ends, but maybe are, are not doing that, but don't know it yet. And so that's going to have to be, be spanned. So I think the, Benson, the way I see this, by the way, I, I, so you kind of don't want one central authorities. I, this kind of gets back to the, the, the hard gate. Um, the way I see this working out is you'll have we'll have a couple sovereigns, not just one. Actually, we'll have a couple sovereigns who aren't the meta project, but help the meta project understand what's going on. So, kind of like a consumer reports or the good parts of a credit reporting bureau, where it's like, uh, yeah, massive wiki is uh, you know according to uh, you know the the Better Business Bureau of of the meta project. Massive Wiki is a good citizen. It's well liked by these other projects that are well liked by those other projects. It's in a network that is is uh, uh, virtuous, right? Exxon um, Exxon gets a mixed grade. Uh, it would have a, a Exxon Mobil working for soil health or something like that would get a mixed grade by the by one reporting agency. It might get a a great report uh, a great uh, grade from another reporting agency and a really bad grade by another reporting agency. So then as a person in the meta project, what I do is I look for the journalists and the um, sense makers that are reporting on the health of the meta project, the health of the world. You know, I trust the people who say that, you know, these projects are good and I, and I antitrust the ones who go, well, these, these people say they're in the meta project. Um, they're burning coal and you know doing all kinds of things. Um, I I don't like that that one, and I don't like the reporting agencies that um, that are reporting that as as a good a good actor. Okay, so this uh, this is this is a critical this is a critical design design thing. So so I think we should put I think we should put a pin in this one. We could dialogue here for a long time. We'll go we'll go to Stacy. Um, Vincent, as a technologist, there's there's a desire to create certain concreteness. As as a person facing an emergency that could lead to a lot of suffering, there's a desire to inspire the broadest possible community of goodwill to figure out how to design and build itself and rightly relate in order to confront these challenges and try to bring about the future that we want. And so I think we're going to have to walk that tension between our desire for certainty and our desire to inspire the broadest possible movement that we can. And a lot of that's going to be releasing any illusion of control and recognizing that all we can do is try to inspire and influence and support and serve. Um, and so from that standpoint, I kind of look at it like any of those groups that you're mapping that say and act like they're heading in the same direction. I would like to serve and support them and empower what they're doing. And if there's things that we could do to do that and they desire that help, like let's do it. And then we're working on the same thing. And it's just kind of a matter of alignment and how dysfunctional we choose to be, like how, how dysfunctional and competitive or aligned do we choose to make ourselves over time? So, so I think we can, this, this warrants another hour long conversation to kind of conceptualize this and, and nail it down a little bit. Those are, Great questions, Vincent. Thanks. Stacy. So I actually also wanted to comment on this gated question and suggest that we hold both ideas loosely. And I hope I can articulate this the right way. But I think uh, to go to your organic analogy, 
I think about the idea of wanting, you know, cage-free eggs. And there's cage-free that's cage-free, and then there's cage-free that's certified humane. Me personally, I make sure to buy the certified humane because I can't be sure that just because they're cage-free, they're living a nice lifestyle. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that this discussion right here is a perfect example of what is going to keep happening further. And earlier today, we spoke about possibly having three paths, two that are parallel. And then I mentioned, I don't know if anybody agreed or not, I think Wendy might have, about this hybrid path. And so I would just say to hold both loosely and not do anything that really makes a decision, but it shouldn't hold anybody back. And I don't know if I'm expressing anything that is useful or understandable, but <laughs> jump in and feel free to uh, yeah. correct me. Very useful and lovely. Thank you, Stacy. Um, Bill? Hi. A um, couple of things. Uh, first of all, I wanted to respond to um, what Jonathan was talking about. Um, and I'm not trying to quote you, Jonathan, so I might, if I misquote you, just uh, let me know. But he is talking about emotions and about the feeling of involvement. And I think this is really important. If I don't feel a sense of identification with somebody, if I don't know them, if I haven't talked to them, if I haven't had the dialogue that comes in a one-to-one -one conversation, I have a hard time building trust and appreciation for somebody. And conversely, they may not appreciate me. I, at times, will be very detail-oriented. And people think, well, he's detail-oriented. He gets caught up in the details. But if you know me like Jordan knows me, I'm also a huge conceptional thinker. I think in big, grand terms. So I'm a generalist and a detail-oriented person. And you wouldn't know that if you didn't talk to me. Um, and the other thing, um, you know, we... Um, we talk about values, we talk about community, we talk about gates, and this is an ongoing discussion. I won't say much about it now, but I have the, a quote from G.K. Testerton. He said, uh, in morality, as in art, you have to draw the line somewhere. But if we draw the line too quickly and too close, we might cut, we might cut somebody out. And uh, this, what Vincent was bringing up is spurred what Jordan said could become a long conversation. And I think this is true. Um, but is for, uh, cage free chickens is a great segue into a discussion about how do you develop influence in the world by making incremental steps and engaging with people. You know, a cage free is just a definition that chickens aren't confined to their cage. They, they're trained to come back to it and they can wander around in the crowd and then every day at the end they come back to it. If you said, no, nope, I'm an idealist, we have to have free range chickens and I will, we don't want you to buy eggs from anything but free range chickens. Well, the world would starve if we needed to eat eggs. We, we have to move incrementally towards some things. And so perhaps engagement with people that we may not align with completely might be the doorway to influence. And I, yeah. this, the last thing I'll say is, if the meta project is anything, it, it isn't just to enable everybody to do anything they want. We want to influence people in the right direction. We want to be influenced ourselves in the right direction. And if we engage with people that we may only have a few things in common with, we might be pulling on the end of a lever that has a fulcrum a long ways away and we can move a large, large mass, we just don't know. So I think all of these elements of engagement and conversation and joint ventures and partnerships and gatekeeping and getting to know one another, these are part of a process of building a community of trust. And if people come and see that, we might just have some people that you'd never expect coming and saying, man, I really like what you guys are doing. Can, can I have some time talking with some of you? I'm pondering these difficult questions here at, here at my, my um, copper mine. I, I wanna repair the environment and nobody will listen to me because they, they just write me off right away. But I wanna do something. I wanna have a 
a community contract, an environmental contract, and, and how can we help people to move from where they're at to where they want to go? Because deep in our hearts, I think we want a better world. Um, but that's it. I won't say more. I okay, Bill. Yeah, them. Bill, th thanks so much for, thanks for that. Like, that's a really critical concept that we could say like who's in and who's out. There's another critical way to look at it is that all of us are falling woefully short and inadequate of what we should be. We all have our paths trying to get better, you know, getting a little better every day. And mm -hmm. therefore the minimum viable step is someone expressing desire to, despite their woeful inadequacies, work in community to improve a little bit. Right. And, and I think that, that, continuum so i just like to raise my hand as you know the most woefully adequate among us that is striving to get a little better every day and i and i think that's kind of a powerful frame to approach it from as opposed to like a if we define organic down here so to speak we might be missing all of this upper reach um and so i think there's something powerful about that continuum also just noting that the higher you rise on that continuum, the more trust and cooperation is generated by means of your integrity or coherence or conformance to the ideal that we're striving towards. So that, that's maybe a more powerful way to, um, to state that. So Bill, thanks for those thoughts, appreciate it. Um, Kilu, before you go, uh, David had pinged me, but I don't think can raise his hand on his phone. So David, I, I just wanna invite your voice in. Sorry, I got distracted by the stream of hands. Thank you so much. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. please. Oh, thank you. Um, so this may be dated, this particular conversation or what I'm about to share, but since you kept using the word organic, uh, Jordan, and uh, that's like one of my favorite words, um, I, I wonder if it's a relevant conversation for now, but I think it might've been Wendy, Someone mentioned the question of uh, context and how important context was. And um, you need to have the right people in the room um, because if you have some people in the room that can't handle the depth or intensity of the conversation or the context, they may spin out and then that could affect the whole group. So I wonder if there's a both and approach like rather than either or where you have a group kind of helping to map out the different ways of looking at the context of the wider conversation um, and the wider culture and the environment we're living in. And then we can help to evaluate our goals based on uh, reference points of, of where we might be supporting the context based on the values that we are purportedly sharing. So this might be a really bad example, but you know, the sustainable development goals and SDGs and the theme of sustainability versus regeneration. Some have said that at times, themes of sustainability can be co-opted to create more essentialization rather than this local living, resilient, decentralized, more sovereign, you know, economies and communities that we're speaking of. So we might be thinking that we're, oh, wow, we're sharing the same values, but we might be looking at SDGs in more degenerative ways rather than regenerative ways. So I don't know if that's a good example, but bringing that up, um, there's obviously you know, hotbeds of controversy when looking at a lot of subjects, but I think that we might need to see which ones are worth looking at and having a, a shared conversation around context because that can help refine our purpose. And when you're trying to have purpose and shared values, but without shared context, you could be in trouble in the long run. Just my thoughts for now. Thank you, Jordan. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, David. Lots of thoughts, um, but I'll, I'll go to uh, Kilo. Thank Thanks, you, David. sorry for the noise. I'm <laughs> driving here. And um, Bill and Jordan pretty much made the first point, the two points I wanted to make. And, uh, you know, maybe just one more way to briefly look at it is, if we choose to be just for something, then we don't really need to exclude, right? We help everyone from where they're at. So if we are for the emergence or for the you know, transition to something, then that's what that looks like. We are for it and we help people starting from where they're at and we cast a wider net. And there's still 
you know, better ways to do that and less so, but I think that's something to consider. And then the second point harkens to earlier in the conversation where Jordan, you were talking about the one thing and it struck me when you were speaking that here we have this amazing group of people. We all vibe a certain way for lack of a better way to describe it. And it makes sense to us, but it might actually be really important to get it right really soon before we open up. How do we describe that one thing to those who just don't hear and don't get what we mean when we say that? Because there's a bunch of them, right? That's sort of the more common thing. And so how would we speak to them in a way that we would get heard and not misheard or, or you know, deeply misunderstood? And I, I don't have an answer. I just wanted to sort of float that question because I think that as we expand and as we get more into the different communities, we kind of got to get that right, right from the start. Mm. Yeah, there's some threads in the chat. I just wrote something in the chat and deleted it, but um, I think that's a really great observation, Kilo, and I, I think it's also related to um, someone asked about uh, whether the meta project can have a founder. <laughs> and that's probably exactly what you just, just referred to Kilo. It's like, I know that I re report to that which is creating and sustaining my life and consciousness. And I'm doing my best to respond to what's being impressed upon me that I can't ignore just as I believe all of you are. And so I think that's, that's the really critical framing here is that the intent of this is to create a space for all of us who are having this impressed upon us to be able to come together and work on, work on it. And um, so, and I agree that's hard to define in a culture that's come unmoored from its ability to talk about the deepest things. It's probably been one of the biggest difficulties to date. So thanks Kilo for surfacing that. Michael. Yeah, and and to that, and off of what we've been talking about in the chat, I really am vibing with this idea that um, you know that I felt forced to grapple with by by like partly by Wendy um, Wendy McLean using the the term co creators founders of the meta project and thinking about, well, really, um, and I don't mean to get too meta on the meta project, but the meta project is something that's existed forever, <laughs> or at least, you know, as I, as I was saying in the chat, since the dawn of everything, and yeah. that, you know, there are, you know, ways of indigenous, the indigenous thinking, there are players like um, Condi Aranc and, uh, you know, highlighted in chapter three of the dawn of everything and who have been doing this. We're like trying to recognize this, weave it together, draw other people in, recognize people who are already on this trail, you know, we, I, I feel like we could almost go back through history and hashtag things meta project. Exactly. And that's, <laughs> that, that's the highest, you know, it's like, you know, trying to pull all these threads, weave together all these threads toward this highest goal. It doesn't belong to us. We're not founding it. You know, we're finding it maybe. Yeah, um, we're, we're finding and, the golden threads already woven throughout history, not speaking anything new and trying to move in service to that's what, which has been trying to emerge this whole time. Exactly. So, so there, there is like, that is so critical, right? So that's when I say the one thing, it's like one thing is the internal and universal and Michael up in the chat, you were saying, well, maybe that's the difference between Lionsburg and the meta project. Maybe it's, and, and I don't know what that looks like, but I agree with you a hundred percent. There is no, it's, it's like my, 
Mila Fiore said this morning, like the universe is my boss. I might say, you know, God's my boss, whatever, but it's like, whatever the source and sustainer of all this magic right. life and consciousness is, that's what I'm accountable to and reporting to. And I've been instructed right. to try to get organized and serve and empower everything else that's also responding to that, whether it knows it or not. Right. And so it's like, so that whole impulse is so universal. And then it's like, and it would be nice to write some checks because some of those people need money. Like, uh, and, <laughs> yeah. and so then you kind of have to go, okay, well, this was where Sophia, I think you did a brilliant job in that loom video. It's about how the eternal and university universal has to descend and incarnate itself in a time and place in order to act out the proposition. Right. And, and so I think that's what we're grappling with here. And I think it's exactly the right conversation. And, and so what I've, and the moment we lose that conversation and become something else, it's like, I'm going to have to drop it and go to work on something else, right? Because that we have to be working on that total thing. And then we have to be deciding, okay, we actually have to figure out how to embody this and live it out together. And maybe that does take some structure. So it's. Yeah. And I, I was just going to say, it relates to the leadership in followership and that like, if Jordan, all you had done, I mean, you, you, you've done so much to bring us together here, but like if the, the, the way to pursue the meta project, you know, can take so many shapes for one person, it might be to like endorse something and talk it up for another person. It might be to write checks for another person. It might be yes. to people-mindedly pursue one aspect of, of the meta project. Yes, exactly. The meta project and the fact that you've always put it in brackets to me is like, it's not of, uh, I mean, it's of us, but it's above us. Yes. Um, and, and that Lionsburg is a thing and other orgs are a thing. And, you know, the mapping project is a thing and they're all sovereigns. And some of them are in service of the meta project and some of them aren't. And it's like up to us and that person who wanted to write checks to say, ah, worthy of support. Doesn't know it's part of the meta project, but is totally part of the meta, meta exactly. project. Exactly. Kondi didn't know he was in the meta project totally in the meta project Correct. you know and yeah. Yeah. yeah i couldn't agree more michael he, he said I couldn't agree more yep so let's live on that tension between the eternal and universal that we're participating in and then okay how do we pragmatically act this out in the world in an organized fashion that might actually be capable of creating the future that we want and that, that then you get into this uncomfortable level of structuring and figuring it out so i think mm -hmm. that's where we're at right now yeah, okay. I think, yeah. I was just oh, you, go, yeah. Either Eric or Wendy, go ahead. Uh, just, I, I need to get to bed, so it would be nice to, <laughs> to talk now first. Um, the, the, uh, one thing is the, this is a process and we're figuring it out and I think we're kind of tuning into ourselves. There's Afstemming, which is a great Dutch word, which I can't really translate, but it's like this continuous checking in, checking out. And this fluency needs to stay. We can't really fix anything in, in um, like casting it in iron or something. <laughs> it's, it's a fluent process, that's one thing. And, and then when it comes to questions like who's in, who's out, there's, I've thought about those questions and there's answers to them. And there's groups who do, do it in a good way, like for instance, uh, the guy who talks about global action networks, he talks about how, okay, if you've got a slave diamond, um, you've got a diamond mine where there's slave laborers, and they also need to be part of the same organization that tries to abolish slavery, and that's, there's steps for that. And so there's good practices out there. There's people who, who've done this kind of things. And, Another question that I would ask is like, how did uh, Jordan choose who, who would be part of this group and who would not be part of this group? There's, there's so, so many intangibles, which you can make tangible if you think long enough about it. But there, there is indeed this like web of trust that we try to build on, like who, who is someone I would trust? I remember bringing someone in in the OGM calls, for instance, who I know is 
very strong on the ADHD and very active. And when he came in, it didn't always seem to feel comfortable. And it's it's not about good or bad. It's just what's fitting, what's working. Um, we need to also sometimes not be nice about it. Like you can't include everyone all the time. That's not possible, but there is a space and like, or, or another concept is like the fringe festival where in, in Edinburgh, there's this art festival where the fringe became bigger than the festival itself. And the fringe is all everything that happens around it. And so there's all these principles that you can use to organize this, to understand this, to, to discern bit by bit how this will work in a good, fluent, ethical, pragmatic, effective way. Right. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, one, one of my friends runs a nonprofit focused solely on creating work for people who have uh, cognitive differences that prevent them from being able to function in society at anything near a minimum wage level. And so uh, just your your share on people with cognitive differences and whatever, and the unique genius and brilliance that can come out of that and the difficulty of fitting it into different group spaces and different fields of coherence and all that, right? I think that all speaks to what we're talking about. And I think part of the way we answer that is through this, this patterning of the circles where these different fields can develop. Um, and, it, and I think it is impossible to put everybody from a thousand different languages and different like perspectives into, into a room. And, and maybe this circle patterning does that, but we have to make sure that that covers the whole mosaic as Jerry and Pete say, you know. And, and, and a last simple thing to say is like clarity can be impatient. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. And I'm going to go to sleep. It's 12 o'clock here. Yeah, uh, thank you. Night. Thank you, Eric. Good night. I pre appreciate your effort to be here and I'm totally open to setting up a, a better time for folks in Europe to connect. <laughs> so um, that might be smart of us. All right. Good night, good brother. Night. Good day. <laughs> Bye. Wendy? Um, yeah, I just keep on coming back, I think, to these circles and the um, the fact that when we add anything, we add just one person, but if we add a whole organisation, you just add this whole little starburst of new things. Um, and it's really important to make small efforts, and they're not hard to do, just to see what that shape is. I mean, we've steadied down on a reasonably small group of people, um, but I'd, I'd like to invite, um, I don't know, one or two people who are interested in doing that because it's, I just sense it's important now. I mean, we've got a lot of commonality ourselves, but you add two or three more people and it will change in, in, enormously, really quickly. And we need to be able to recognize the readiness of other people and make them feel comfortable because quite often people don't recognize it in themselves because they've never had that assurance. And quite often, if you don't have that assurance, you do cause disorder, even though you didn't mean to. That's me all the time. <laughs> I don't mean to. I just sense that something's important. I have no idea how to express it. I might still be feeling my way with the words that annoys other people, um, you know, and it just pushes people out. So just this opportunity for people to feel included, which means what we really need to get a bit of a handle on the spread of what it is that we're doing at the moment. Um, and there's a couple of different methods out there. And I, I think that that's going to be pretty wild. It's not all categorical. It just can't be done in a categorical sense. There's no categories that contain some of these ideas. They just can't be done. Um, so anyway, um, I'd like to honour that because that's messy and it gets messier really quickly. So we should be experimenting actively with what we can do right now and not defer it just to see um, and, and discuss it, to see where the edges are, where the overlaps are, where the gaps are, even in the roughest possible way. Um, I'm willing to work with people on it. You know, it's, it's very simple. Wendy, <laughs> Wendy this, this may be uh, unnecessary and inappropriate, but just because you made the statement for whatever it's worth, if you've never had anybody give you the assurance of how spectacular and um, valuable and uniquely gifted and uniquely deserving at a seat of 
every table you could ever find your way to. Um, we just want to collectively acknowledge and, and validate your unique genius and brilliance and express gratitude for all that you bring to us all here. So thank you so much for being here and thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for expressing and may we see ever more of what's uniquely you come forward. So Wendy, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Judy. It's just a very powerful sense of energy as well as peace that emotes from this group of people. And it's very special, but I also sense that there's the potential for that in large, large numbers of people who haven't been recognized as being able to share that same perspective. And that's going to be part of our networking opportunity and sometimes a challenge and I was reminded in my youth not to be naive. There is actually evil in the world. <laughs> and so I should be alert to the possibility that that exists while not anticipating it or burying it prematurely. And that's kind of a delicate balance I have found. Um, but I usually start with trust and get burned. <laughs> and if I get burned, then I know I shouldn't trust. <laughs> um, it's a question of scale of getting burned that's important to be aware. But I, I do think that we shouldn't overly structure this process because if it becomes perceived as not inclusive, we will fail in what we're trying to do. So. Yeah. I think that's gonna be, that share on the reality of evil in the world and the decision despite that to courageously try to do something together is, is a little bit of everything. And I think that also relates to the questions that people sense on boundaries and hard gated versus soft gated and all those things. It's like, um, so we have to hold that intention and acknowledge both. Like, I, th I think we need to understand that we might be walking together into a battle that's more difficult than we could imagine. And it might be that the more good happens and the more it looks like things like this might succeed you know the more reaction there will be and there's no other choice but to go anyway right to be courageous to trust to try absolutely and, and to i think smarter. there are a lot of people looking to find what we're talking about creating and that will build its own momentum and i'm optimistic that that will ultimately thwart others with evil intent and that the the goodness will win but. i think so much of this like i think pete has had some good good statements on this but but the stronger we create the field of like values and behavior and the more integrity we treat this dinner party with <laughs> the more it'll become obvious if anybody comes in and isn't you know, being greedy or dancing on the table that they're just not, not welcome. It'll kind of, so, so I think that's a, a key challenge for us to figure out, okay, what's the decorum of the banquet and how do we all hold ourselves to the highest standard of that to such an obvious degree that it is absolutely repelling to anybody who doesn't want to behave in those manners. So thanks, Judy. Jonathan. Mm, yeah. Um, okay. I, yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Jonathan. Go ahead. No, I, I, let me just ask the group. Would you would you like me to? Um, I'm okay on time, but I don't want anybody to take more of their day than this. We're we're now um, maybe in one of the deepest overruns. Um, so um, I was just trying to be sensitive. So maybe maybe we could tentatively put a 15 minute cap or something on it. Just um, but go ahead, Jonathan. No pressure, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> So yeah, great discussion here. Um, there's definitely um, interesting personality tensions, uh, good and evil, um, grandstanding. Uh, but I, the one that comes to mind for us 
in a particularly personal way is that the um, experience I often have in a one-on-one -on -one is that both people have an agenda and that itself can make it hard to listen and um, bring the other person uh, fully to mind. Um, and I think it comes from being fucking starved uh, in our current culture that we're just smashed into bug guts by the um, prevailing media and the power crazy uh, nut fucks that are in charge. And so, gosh, when we get a chance to talk, boy, howdy do we. Um, and so the poignant notion here is how do we, each of us, become really good at being interested in and embracing somebody else? Yeah. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> it's, it's a Jonathan. personal challenge. <laughs> Jonathan, you should have a one-on-one -on -one with Bill Larson, who's on this phone call. I'd love it. Um, and Bill, would you, Bill, would you be available for that for Jonathan? Okay, great. Uh, uh, may I ask why, uh, Jordan? What would you have in mind? Because I think it's true that we're fucking starved for everything of meaning and value, and we're probably so alienated from what our interactions with each other should be and what right relationship looks like and what it means to listen to somebody and care and find value and have a faint glimmer of what reasonable relationship might be like um, that. And I think um, of some of the people I know on the call, I think Bill could connect with you very deeply on that level. Um, oh, validate that and help um, I think the two of you could also you know help the group point towards how to address that in a very meaningful and profound way oh, awesome awesome but, thanks yeah I'll work it out with you Bill. yeah and and Jonathan I want to I want to thank you for using that strong language too um <laughs> because because it because it's true i think it's it's we might not realize how alienated we, we're and starved are for beauty and meaning and like truth and some semblance of something that might work and like something that almost coheres with like i i think we might be unimaginably alienated so thank you for being willing to speak that out thank you a lovely conversation so a couple aspects so first of all, it's, there must be other organizations there that have done this in some way or other. And maybe nothing is embodied the same way that we're seeking to do. Maybe there are organizations that are embodying to serve a community, but they don't have the energetic components. Maybe there are organizations that have the energetic components in the I don't know, energetic spiritual consciousness world, but they don't have the practical component and so on. And I'm just struck by the realization that maybe in our group already there are people who know a lot about those, or if not, we're within one degree of people who do. And can we, you know, how easily can we pick their brains? And then the next part is we gotta do what we gotta do with people we got from where we're at. That goes to the urgency. And I think that's important because on one hand, you know, we could spend a lot of time judging, but how productive is that really in terms of how we show up and how others show up? And so how do we maximize the intentionality and the value of the intention and intentional action and minimize the seeing of the perfectly valid imperfection in us and ourselves in a way that we can be compassionate, forgiving, inclusive, practical, efficient, productive, you know, all of those things. I think that's important. 
And I forgot what the third thing was. <laughs> But, but again, the invitation to see who else has done what we are seeking to do, or at least some aspects thereof, what are the learnings that we can get, or else can we engage people and their wisdom, the non obvious kind, the kind that's not as experts, but the one that's coming with the scars. Sorry, I was trying to talk as a minute. The perfectly valid imperfection struck deeply, um, tying back to the themes we talked about earlier. Like I think celebrating that perfectly valid imperfection in each of us is, is really key to creating the spaciousness. Wendy? Oh, so many things. Um... I think there's something about um, us when we have intense experiences and I've had several of them over the last week, three or four of them actually, and maybe it's something in me because I think you do evoke these things, um, which I guess goes to the point that Jonathan was making. Um, each or well, most times directly afterwards, I've had a sort of steadying conversation with someone and I've learned something really profound from that. Um, and because each of us are in different contexts, doing different things, um, I think there's a value in um, just quickly learning about what it is where you messed up, fucked up, if you like. <laughs> I put my foot in some things that I really didn't mean to put my foot in, and yet there were traps there. And um, it's it's not, you know, we're not we don't have to pay for people outside. I think there's a lot of gifting that's happening here, but I think it, it's one-on-one, -on -one, not, not necessarily um, counselling, but one-on-one -on -one space for someone, just so you can learn really, really quickly <laughs> instead of this long, slow, drawn-out thing where you're thinking, right, wow, I did have a choice there next time in the next moment. So anyway, I mean, when we can, we've all got resources, we all know people, we can all be resources to one another. I think this, it's almost like the RFG thing, you know, intense experience. Can I get over this quickly, take the learnings and then bring them back to the group? Um, because I think all of us are trying to push the needle in different places and getting it wrong. And those stories shared can't necessarily be shared in this recording format. Um, because it's not really the place for them after a while, not if they were going to be enduring, but the meta lessons can be. So something over the week, you know, these were my experiences, a specific reach out to someone, you know, can I have 20 minutes of someone's time to talk through X? <laughs> because I don't have a resource locally and I need something that's a bit distant so I can do the whole brutal thing, knowing that, you know, that that, that learning can then be talk, take, taken back to the group as a little micro thing. Um, yeah, lots of big things that are happening for me at the moment. And I don't want them to be things that put me into disorder. And I can actually take the threads out of where I'm succeeding and just completely mess them up just because I didn't have that little tiny prop. <laughs> and we're all distant to each other. So yeah, it's hard time wise, everyone's so busy. Wendy, if you need 30 minutes this week, I'm here. I'm here, I'd be delighted to help you process. Um, there's a key principle in lean, which is about creating throughput of a goal, that every defect is a gift. And maybe that's the thing we should be celebrating. Like if you're just paying attention to everything that's going right, you're not learning. And so there's the idea that we should really be surfacing and celebrating the mistakes, defects, hitches. <laughs> like stepping into traps um, and then trying to resolve those in a way that also resolves them for the system. And maybe that continuous surfacing and resolution of issues is actually the, the path towards the continuously improving system. So thank you for sharing that, Wendy. Stacy. 
Yes, I had originally put my hand down, but then when Wendy started talking, I realized it's important. Um, I had put in Town Square today about the idea of a group to do exactly this kind of processing when it shows up because as much, so what Jonathan said is true. So many of us are starved. And what happens is the people who have experienced that kind of starvation are usually the most empathetic and they stretch themselves to make sure they're there for other people, but it could become a very heavy burden. So I'm thinking of like mothers, you know, and mothers will always sacrifice themselves for the group. And to have a small group that's specifically there for who's ever there to hold it up at the time should be something woven into the fabric, I believe. So I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I don't know what a community might be if there's not a small group dedicated to upholding those needs who need to be upheld at the time. But usually it usually it falls to like volunteers or we do it out of friendship, right. but it's not really sustainable. Yeah. I don't think it's sustainable. Yeah, what is that too like? I, I disagree <laughs> because I think it's sustainable if you are in a culture where we're all connected because it doesn't fall to just one person, it falls to multiple people and that creates its form of stability and sustainability. But are we there yet? Like, how, like, there, well, I, I, we're on a journey. We'll never be there. Quote. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But that's, that's okay. A passion of mine. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've seen. I think if we acknowledge the level of trauma <laughs> that is present, um, like yes. It, we need to take that seriously. And, and so whatever group or function that is, it's a function, right? It's a function that's needed and we're gonna fall down and have troubles and get um, bordering on a descent into chaos if we can't sort things out and all those things. And so, um, and I've noticed that in the families and communities that I'm around, a lot of times people really struggle to find that resource at the right time. A lot of times people are too embarrassed to reach out to that resource. And so you end up with these unnecessary just descents into hell of that are that could totally be prevented, I think, by the time kind of thing you're talking about, Stacy and and others. So um so so let's mark that. <laughs> let's mark that. If I could just add something, which is that it doesn't always have to be at a level of trauma. Like we're all still learning, I mean, I put, it, I put it better in the Lionsburg chat, I think, but we're all still learning who we are and exposing our own shadows. And it doesn't have to be a major thing, but like there are some things we're not used to looking for, so we don't know they're there. Mm. When you're in a small trusted group, things kind of come up and you can notice them in ways that you wouldn't have noticed them before, like just by hearing other people's stories, you can relate to things within you that you hadn't really thought about. Yeah. Mm. And it's not for everyone. So let me just say like, not everybody would want to participate and that's fine, but other people would really be nourished by it. Celebrate your passion for that, Stacey, and, and agree. That's a really key need. Wendy? So I was just saying that I had an instance of a brutally um, honest conversation in my own household. And then I had a clean language session booked in with some of my friends in the ANZ region. Um, one of them was the UK actually. And it, I went straight from one exactly into the other. And it was, um, I wouldn't it was say life-changing. You know, it was, there was no gap at all. It, I went exactly out of one room and into the next room. And it made such a big difference. Um, and I, I know that's not there all the time, it can't be done. But it just made it profoundly clear to me that we actually need to have resources just to nourish ourselves until we've got that gap filled. And then it can, you know, there's someone you know, that you need to talk to. And yesterday, I didn't have that experience. I kept reaching out for people and I knew something tricky was happening. 
but I didn't have any opportunity to talk it through beforehand. And then the whole out the outcome for me was much worse because I couldn't I could pick the the lead up if that makes sense, the mess and the messiness and not be able to resolve it because there was no one who could really breach that gap and I couldn't do it for myself or I didn't feel I could do it for myself. So anyway, there's patterns in this closing the gap. Loved what you said, Stacey, that was spot on. <laughs> and um, yeah, I know it can be a burden for some people and those people actually need other people that they can chat to. So <laughs> yeah, I just love the fact it's just the time zones. There's so much that's squished into the beginning part of the day that just makes it really hard to be able to have all the conversations you want just to set everything up. So <laughs> mm. I, I love that. Um, wow, great. I, I hear a, a tension between let's fix the world, but I'm broken. <laughs> and um, I've been in groups that have just perked up and been wonderfully loving and nurturing when one of the people says, um, I'm not feeling so good right now. Something's really troubling me and you know an hour of being in the hot seat is so life healing it's, it's like it, it, we carry around core woundings that we're not even aware of and then they just show up in the darndest times that just ruin everything um, and then having a group that lets you show yourself lets you just be um, known down deep. It, it just makes you cry, man. Um, and feel um, the opposite of the thing that wounded you back whenever. Um, and, and you know what? The people that are helping you, they feel great about themselves doing that. So it's, it's a gigantic win-win uh, opportunity. And I, I love hearing that it's showing it's a beautiful ideation here. Yay. <laughs> We all need healing and we never want to reveal that because that means we're weak and um, inappropriate and uh, selfish and all kinds of things that modern society suppresses that with. So it takes courage to speak like you just did, Wendy. And I want to applaud Anybody who feels like, you know, I think I'll jump in the hot seat and let people talk with me and know me and be nurturing. It's, it's our roots, you know, it's where, it's our superpower as a species. You know, we have language, man, it's a great tool, let's use it instead of beating each other over the head with it. Nicely said. Thank you. In this law, I just want to tonally clear the thing I was saying about material support. That wasn't poking fun at all. It was like, like just like the the psychological and and you know healing support that we need so that you know, we can contribute, you know, we, we all do run up against the, you know, uh, run, do everything. and it's the question Jordan was asking, like, much earlier in the meeting, you know, are there people who are held back from doing all they can toward the highest goal by material considerations? And, you know, I thought, who isn't, you know, and um, yeah, we, we all need all kinds of help. And it doesn't have to be from experts. It can just be, you know, you, or just 
beautiful when we're when the dominoes are set up right we just that's a terrible analogy but you know what i mean yeah yeah that feels like that may be a pretty good place to wrap um that's about as far away from planning as we could have gotten so i think that's perfect um I think, you know, one of the really magnificent things that's happened on this is that it, it's so incredibly obvious that we can't all bring forth what's in us to bring forth if we don't figure out how to heal ourselves and care for the whole being and find proper spaces of community and places to talk and process the things in our head we don't have words for. And I mean, that that's like, that's the harder work than sitting in a little project management meeting and then just doing what's easy. So um, I just want to really celebrate that. I think that's going to be really foundational to how we need to be going forward. So I uh, feel again, just <laughs> immense gratitude. Here we are three hours into our 90 minute call and uh, such a rich, rich field. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to, well, yeah, I will, I will see you soon. I'll do my best to um, think and reflect some of this back and keep walking this balance between um, trying to advance enough through these different stages um, and really just celebrating this being an emergence and deep things that are coming out. And then I think what's becoming obviously clear is that maybe the most significant thing that's needed is community and right relationship. And if we can get that right and then unleash the fullness of each of ourselves, every, every other obstacle will fall, I think. So anyway, all right, well, appreciate you guys. Thank you. Hope you're each leaving this call better than you came into it. All right, well, we'll see you guys soon. Have a, Take have care, a wonderful. Like, you say goodbye. No, you say goodbye first. <laughs> I say goodbye, everybody gets kicked out. So. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to do that. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, much love. Thank you. All right. Hey, hey Jordan, I would love to take oh. you up on your implied offer to spend time talking. That would be, well, let's do it. Okay. Let's do it all alone. I'll drop, drop my email in the chat here. Why don't you shoot All me right. an email? All right, I will. You want to talk for, um, can I kick out uh, water out here? Do two things. We could schedule a timer. I'd be happy to talk with you for uh, 15 minutes right now if you'd like. Let's do it. Let's jump you on it. You want to do that? We're both in a good mood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's, uh, well, let's take a, let's take 60 seconds to, to, uh, let's see, I want to turn off. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna end this meeting so we kill the transcript. Right. And then, um, and then why don't we see each other in um, two or three minutes right back on here. Let me, uh, let me kill the transcript, grab the drink, and then I'll, I'll be back in about three minutes. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. You're going to leave the chat open. I'm, I'm actually just, I'm going to end the meeting, ah, but you could right. just, but just click the same link. It's just to my personal meeting room. So I'm going to, I'm going to kill this because I want to kill the transcript so we can just talk freely and then uh, rock. Okay. So, so I'm going to, I'll, I will see you. This will end. We'll both rejoin the meeting and, you know, three rock minutes on. or so. Rock All right. and roll. All right. Enjoy your that. drink. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.